Hey there, YouTube. Uh, it's Brad Wiggles back again. Uh, it's been a long time, it's been four months probably. Summertime came and of course uh, things went by the wayside with the track machine and uh, cutting grass, chores, cutting grass, garden, cutting grass, fixing flower beds, cutting grass. You know, in acreage, there's a lot of grass to cut. So uh, hunting season's over though and man, I'm pumped to get back to the machine and uh, let's see some progress. Um, yesterday spent all day out here, friend came over, gave me a hand, we got lots of things done. Um, I'll summarize that up and then um, go on to a little bit of a, a few changes in the theory of the plan because, um, yeah, well, we'll get to that later. Okay, so, yeah, the shop's a bit of a mess. Anyways, everybody, Probably remembers the uh, wheels sitting there. Um, so that's all good. We've got uh, holes in the belting. And this was thanks to my friend Sean, came over and uh, as you can see, there is 60 feet of belting with two holes drilled in every four inches. So yeah, a lot of holes. <laughs> that's all done. Now you can see a test piece just, just you know loosely fitted together not uh not official yet it's actually backwards the holes are offset and uh the, the larger piece has to be on this side so that the metal the rubber sticks out past the edge of the metal you can see there the metal is even with the edge of the rubber and i want the rubber out a little bit this way so so yeah spent yesterday doing that um really cool news is we got to working on the sprocket the drive so yesterday, we'd actually fabbed up the drive sprocket using a piece of some tabs. My original plan was actually to have a piece of pipe in the center come out and then just have pieces to hold it wherever it was. But I was really concerned about that because there's a little collar here that the that hub fits over and can't interfere with that. And then the gap would be so close between the holes for the nuts where the studs go through and uh, and where that piece of pipe would be. I'd have a hard time keeping the holes clean without damaging them. So yesterday I had the idea, well, let's just weld on some pieces of flat bar out and then just weld this onto the pieces of flat bar. Great idea until we put one flat bar on each hole and of course there are eight cogs. So there were some in this way. Well. The way that those guides work, they go inside like this, so the guide sits here, and if there's anything in the way, it's going to hit it. So we had to take that apart and hum and haw over it a bit, and then I come up with the idea of using this one-inch square tubing and building a collar out, and it clears all the nuts as well, the studs and nuts. So yeah, that's uh, so you can see how that's going to go. There we go, and uh, of course the belting will wrap around that with the uh, with the guides and everything. Oh, once I get the belt fabbed up or at least loosely bolted together, then I am going to lay it out over top of the wheels, and it should look pretty cool, even just to see it. And the other thing, when my buddy Sean was here, we looked at this and thought that it's definitely a good idea to have another wheel up front higher. Um, just so in case you hit larger things, larger objects, it's up high and it'll allow you to climb over big things. With it, it's so low, you're basically limited to something that's right about here is the height. So, yeah. A few other musings on this same setup. I went to Track Industries a year ago and they said, suggested that when you assemble the track, the... Uh, front wheel is tensioned by a shock or a, sorry a piston like a hydraulic cylinder and they pump it full of grease grease won't leak out over time and uh, that tensions the track so i was thinking about that and i thought well it would be nice to have uh, like you know spring there so that that wheel could go forwards and backwards but the problem they said with that is that when you do hit something 
that wheel will pull back, but you can lose traction on the drive cog and end up uh, slipping. So I think I'll stick with their plan. I'm actually think I'm just going to do is make it so that the wheel can slide and then is tension bolted to the plate or something or to the to that frame so that we don't have to worry about we just set it up to fit tighten it down call it good and uh or maybe a big long like a piece of one inch uh ready rod and then just with a nut and just tension it that way it would be would be good and then just tighten the bolts up the other thing i wanted to give a shout out to uh Another YouTuber who subscribed to me, uh, Prankster Man, uh, watched his videos. He sent me some comments and suggestions, and we were chatting back and forth. We were talking about the braking system, and he said, "Well, you know," and <laughs> I have to agree. I thought this as well. Taking another master cylinder and mounting it underneath here, and then the fabrication, just the fabrication to get that from here through. Is going to be nasty so he said hey take those brakes master cylinders out and mount them behind the rear seat so basically take the the master cylinder rip this seat out and then mount both of them and here's the second one i got from the junkyard mount it right underneath here with the rods going underneath the seat to the two arms that you used to steer with the dimensions uh that's all straight so it's all you know it's all um there's no angles to contend with it's just simple um, adjusting the length of the arm to get the tension or the torque you want based on the amount of pressure you get over the pistons and blah 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 so anyways that's a great idea again thanks prankster man that's awesome that's what i'll be doing that's going to save me a pile of fabrication time because just the work it would take to mount one of those under there and to get it through to the arms yeah this is a way better idea so Anyways, today I'm going to actually finish up fabricating that. I'm going to do some more tack welding. I think I'm going to wait to permanently weld it all. I'm just going to add some more tacks to the inside of the one-inch bars. And then, uh, then I'm going to try to assemble this piece into uh, a track. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. I've actually got to finish welding all those, all those bars. The uh, brackets are not done. As you can see, don't look at my workbench, it's dirty. But these are all tacked, but they're not uh, permanent. So got to add another weld on the outside here for each one of those. And there's a hundred or so. Anyways, yeah, Brad Wiggles signing out for today. Mm, give an update. If I do get it done, I'll add on to this video. If not, it goes the way it is. Thanks, guys. Please like and subscribe.